is a complex place made up of many different environments. Ecology looks at living things and the environments they inhabit. Smaller, self-contained environments, such as forests, lakes, and streams, are examples of ecosystems. They include their own set of plants and animals and local conditions like temperature, wind, and rain. Ecosystems link up to form larger areas called biomes. Rainforests, deserts, and grasslands are a few of the Earth's largest biomes. All of these places are full of things that depend on each other. Think about a rainforest, for instance. It relies on non-living or abiotic factors like sunlight, soil, water, and gases in the atmosphere. They help living organisms, the biotic parts of an ecosystem, survive. The animals here wouldn't make it without some source of fresh water, and these plants require sunlight to thrive. In just about every environment, the sun provides the main source of energy. During photosynthesis, plants convert the sun's energy into chemical energy or food. They use the light of the sun to transform water and carbon dioxide into simple sugars called glucose. Glucose serves as fuel for the plants and energy for the organisms that eat them. Plants become food for animals that are eaten by other animals, and so on. This flow of energy and nutrients among all organisms is known as the food web. Perhaps the most important idea in the study of ecology is that nothing exists on its own. Change one part of a given ecosystem and the rest of the ecosystem gets disrupted. A ripple effect is created that often extends to other environments. By studying ecology, scientists can figure out why plants and animals behave as they do, and why in many cases their behavior changes. Understanding ecology is vital for the survival of all species, even humans. The way we use our natural world affects the Earth's ability to provide the resources we need. Ecology tells us our actions have consequences, not only for us, but for every other living organism that shares the planet with us. In Peru, along the base of the Andes Mountains, lies the Manu Biosphere Reserve. Covering about four and a half million acres, it's the largest and most undisturbed tropical rainforest in the world. Here, more species of plants and animals are protected than in almost any other place on Earth. Around a thousand species of birds, 300 kinds of trees, and countless other forms of life call Manu home. They rely on each other and the resources of this land to survive. Living organisms thrive in this biome because conditions for life are ideal. The climate is wet, the temperature is warm, and the sunlight provides constant energy. Trees grow tall here and form a canopy that collects energy from the sun far above the ground. As a result, most of the food for plant-eating animals grows among the leaves and branches. Over time, animals learn to fly, leap, swing, and climb to get at the food they need. Zoologist Dr. Carol Mitchell has been studying monkeys in the Manu rainforest for 12 years. For two of those years, she followed a troop of about 70 squirrel monkeys. She learned how they gather food 
and where they fit into the larger food web. I actually had always wanted to uh, study monkeys, and I was always intrigued by tropical forests. And in tropical forests, you find the greatest diversity of animal species. She quickly discovered that squirrel monkeys don't work alone. Instead, they get the nutrients they need by teaming up with another species, the capuchin monkey. Together, they forage for palm nuts found in the trees. Capuchins are the only animal which can open up the initial part of the palm cluster. And the squirrel monkeys hang around underneath and pick up nuts which are half eaten by the capuchins. It's a smart strategy. Palm nuts enhance their diet by giving them an important source of oil and calories. Squirrel monkeys consume a richer variety of food by scavenging around the capuchins. During her time with the squirrel monkeys, Dr. Mitchell determined their place in the intricate ecology of the rainforest. Squirrel monkeys are very crucial in the web of life. They are uh, one of the prime consumers of insects in the rainforest. And also, they are one of the main food sources for a number of raptor species. Scientists monitor all areas of the rainforest to see how each species contributes to such a complex environment. And while it might seem like a lot of work to spend so much time with a single species, they have a bigger picture in mind. Unless we understand and care for places like Manu, these incredible environments won't be preserved for the future. Deserts cover about one-fifth of the world's land, making them one of the largest biomes on Earth. But they're also the driest places on the planet. Most of them get less than four inches of rain each year. During the day, temperatures often climb to more than 100 degrees Fahrenheit, with the surface of the sand becoming even hotter than that. This harsh land holds limited resources, so desert animals must take whatever food is available. These birds have to share a single lizard. It may be the only food they consume for a while. A Gila monster steals quail eggs from an unprotected nest. The fat is stored in its tail and abdomen to use when times get lean. A kangaroo rat gets all the water it needs from the seeds it collects and packs in its cheeks. While some species manage to get by, many simply can't survive here. This is an environment where one species can make the difference for so many others. For instance, thanks to the towering saguaro cactus, several creatures in the Sonoran Desert consider this place home. The saguaro is unique to the Sonoran Desert that stretches from the southwest United States into northwestern Mexico. The adult cactus has five or six arms, reaches heights of 50 feet, and can live for up to 200 years. Most importantly, it provides a lookout point, a house, and a source of food for many desert animals. These woodpeckers know a good home when they find one. They excavate parts of the trunk and branches, creating a nesting place for themselves and other small birds. Owls and hawks also hang around the cactus. Its sharp spines keep their young well protected from predators. In a desert climate, the saguaro gets all the sunlight they need for energy but water is a much different story. To collect moisture, they rely on a network of widespreading roots that cover large areas of the desert ground. Their tough, rubbery skin 
helps them store the moisture for months at a time. In the spring, the Sonoran Desert really comes alive. During this time, the saguaro produce white blossoms and edible crimson fruit. The buds open at night, providing a feast for the long-nosed bats. The bats feed on them and pollinate the cacti at the same time. This fertilization allows energy-rich fruit to form. Thousands of seeds contained in the fruit will feed many others. By providing shelter, protection, and food, the saguaro is a key part of the Sonoran Desert biome and a crucial element in the struggle for survival here. In every ecosystem, living things are linked by the food they eat and the energy they get from the food. These links taken together make up the food web. Food chains within these webs often involve predator and prey relationships. The grasslands of Serengeti National Park in Tanzania are home to a great diversity of animals, each dependent on the next for survival. Here, where the climate is dry and the soil is poor, grass collects energy from the sun and kicks off each food chain. Plant eaters like these gazelles feed on the grass. And in doing so, they help even more grass grow back in its place. The large number of plant-eating animals found in the Serengeti provides food for many predators. Each predator has its own techniques for hunting prey. Reaching speeds of more than 60 miles per hour, cheetahs are fast enough to run down gazelles. Lions aren't so fast and tend to sneak up on their prey with little warning. Hyenas can bring down animals more than three times their weight. One zebra yields plenty of food for a group. Most of the time, these predators work together, but in the end, they often compete with each other for the catch. Hyenas and cheetahs are fierce competitors. Not only do they steal each other's food, they also attack each other's cubs. In a pinch, these predators become clever scavengers. Large predators need to eat less frequently than other animals because their bodies use up energy at a much slower rate. Anything they leave behind gets broken down and eventually returned to the soil as nutrients for plants. The food chain always starts as photosynthesis and ends in decay.